Hello, this is Brian Reyes. I'm a cloud architect here at CenturyLink. What I want to cover with you today is simple backup service. Sometimes we call it SBS for short. What I want to do first is give you an overview of two of the screens that I'm going to be going back and forth to. So as you see here, I have CenturyLink Cloud up. We're looking at servers in my Santa Clara data center. I created a server group called SBS Simple Backup and I have a few servers in it. So we're going to go through the CenturyLink Cloud Portal and I'll be looking at an RDP session to that Simple Backup Server 03. Now I want to be able to validate that Simple Backup Server is not installed, so after we have it installed, if I go to localhost and then the port, it'll actually come up with the service. But for now, I just wanted to kind of give you that overview so when I flip back and forth, it, do it doesn't become confusing to you. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you right now that this is the local PC, the SBS 03 server. Uh, if you look in Brian, info there's no date at this point well what I will end up doing during this demo is I'm gonna pull over a pretty large file um, it's 1.72 gigs I'm gonna bring that over to my local drive under the directory bright info so that'll get us started and we'll actually start here in CenturyLink Cloud Portal so what we'll notice is there's a couple different ways, like everything in CenturyLink Cloud. If you want to manage the server through a backup policy, you have a couple different ways of doing it. You could go straight from the server. You'll see backup level, and then you would just hit manage. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start from scratch, and I'm going to create a backup policy. So when I come in here, I'll select backup. That'll bring me down to where we set up our policies. And if you notice, I have a couple of them inactive and a few of them active. Uh, we'll walk through each one of the steps here of how to do a simple backup policy. And it's really simple to use like everything in the cloud. So first off, I'm going to give it a name. And I'll do this, company Y. And I'll put the name hourly with the directory bri info whatever name you want to provide it I'm gonna put this as a window system you can type in or arrow up with the frequency of how often that you want the directory or the server backed up um, we'll do retention I'm just gonna do five days of retention Actually, you know, I'll make that three just to show you how you can input it in different areas. To, the paths to include. So here's what you do. If you know the application or just the basic information that you want to back up, you can type it in. If I wanted to add an additional path, you just hit add path and just add whatever additional paths. Here you can exclude paths. Let's say you had some data that you really didn't care about and it was a ton of data and you didn't want to back it up. Go ahead and add that path here. So really we spent, what, about uh, less than a minute here creating the information for the backup policy itself. I'm going to select Create the Backup Policy and that will drop us down and, and queue up and create uh, a certain policy for us. Again, I mentioned from CenturyLink Cloud, I can just do it from the server itself, but since I already have the server and I'm in this interface, I'm going to just add a server to the policy that I just created. Um, I'm going to go into my data center, the Santa Clara data center. That will grab and fetch all the servers that are in my environment. And the latest one is SBS03. Now you can choose the storage region. Right now we have east and west. We're going to be expanding that considerably as the months uh, go come by here. And I'm going to choose west. And right now I did it from the policy itself. So it's identifying the company Y hourly BRI info. Again, a number of different ways of doing this, but uh, I did it from the policy itself, so it defaulted. This will give me an overview of what that policy consists of. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and choose apply backup policy so that will go ahead and kick it off and as we notice going to the actual server and we'll see how this application and the process and everything kicks off here so I'm gonna go ahead and drop back into this screen remember in the past I was showed you at the very beginning that when we did localhost port 15 915 uh, didn't have anything it failed web page is not available after we go through the blueprint you'll see that we end up getting access to the environment and there we go just took a minute for the blueprint to kick off and now we're ready and you could tell that the simple backup service is installed let me actually go drop back here I'm gonna go from the simple backup portal I'm gonna go back to my overall portal itself I wanna show you in the queue we could have actually watched it drop in through the process itself but when you drop into the queue if we would have went here you would have seen it go from pending to in progress to queued and then completed you'll see that uh, one of the completed most recent pa um, packages completed is execute package on one server in UC1 so we have additional logging that you can get more details but this just gives you that flow through the queue and this job is actually complete All right, so now that we have the policy kicked off here, you'll notice that it initially kicks off the job itself and does a backup. Uh, if you want, you can go in here and say, hey, I want you to go ahead and kick off one additional job. It'll send it into queue, and it's going to back up that directory or the server. And when it's done, you'll see this success. Now, one thing that I want to show you is... I'm going to go ahead and move this. Um, again, this Brian info that it's backing up has no information in it yet. So what I want to do is I've mapped a drive to this additional server in my environment, my double take server. I'm going to go in and I'm going to just grab this entire, again, we looked at the properties just to show you what I'm dealing with. It's a 1.72 gig directory and it has one file in it. It's a zipped up file. And I'm going to go ahead and move this in to my local system. And it's saying, hey, this might be harmful. We're going to go ahead and bypass that and just copy the data. Again, Centralink's backbone, we've got a very fast uh, 10 gig backbone. And this is copying the data pretty quickly. Now, normally you wouldn't do a demo or an example with this big of a file. I mean, a simple 400 megs would do just fine, but I went ahead and wanted to really pump it up to a 1.7, I think it was 1.72 gigs of, of data that we're going to back up. Now, if I look in that directory, you see the Brian test, and you'll see the compressed folder. And that's about the 1.7 gigs. So we're going to go ahead and drop back down in my RDP session to the interface. And again, I could do this within the server itself or remote like a uh, support person would do. Um, here I'm going to go to the home dashboard. I see my company Y hourly Bry info policy. Um, it's already active. And I'm going to go ahead and just tell it one more time to back up. The system so this back and this drops me into the backup jobs and this one's queued up and you'll notice it's queued for a bit longer it's actually sending that data to our object storage for secure and protected backup of that directory so it went from queue to in progress and it's going through this Now, one of the reasons why I took this second backup outside of when I initially installed the service and I took this second one because I'm going to show you that when there was no data, you're going to see under the 
restore jobs, you're going to see zero data being backed up. And now that this additional backup is complete, we're going to see that there's a lot of additional data that's being um, backed up and stored in our object storage. So I'm going to go to, actually, you know, I'll go to the home dashboard. I'm going to go through a process of restoring. I'm not going to restore it yet because I actually want to delete it, but I want to show you where it describes how much data is being protected. So we had the initial backup, which was successful. Didn't have any information because nothing was in the folder. I took that secondary backup snapshot. And then this third one is when I copied that data over to the server. So let me go ahead and drop into the local directory. Here I have what created that larger backup job. And as you saw, it was a really fast process. I'm going to go ahead and delete that directory. Someone was working, accidentally deleted this one whole directory, or maybe it was just a file. Um, I'm going ahead and doing big amounts of data being backed up and stored. So here I'm going to go back and I'm going to kick off one additional backup. We'll have that queued up. And again, it's going to go a lot faster since there's not going to be a lot of data in that directory that we had being backed up. I want to show you again the re restore. will show you how much data was being protected in that directory. So we went from nothing in the directory, a second backup with nothing. I pulled over the files for 1.7 gigs of data. I deleted the directory and kicked off a backup. So now when I look at that directory, hey, you know, someone comes back to the server and they realize, oh no, I deleted a backup. So they need to have that file and whatever file that they accidentally deleted or that whole directory uh, restored to the system itself. So now let's go ahead and walk through the simplicity of restoring a directory to our system. So I'm going to go through the restore again. Had just recently done it. I want to restore this file that had my data or at this time and, and point. I'm going to go ahead and I showed you before that we only had the on the root directory bride test. I'm going to restore this to let's see bride restore. So again just to show you off of that local root directory I do not have a bri restore. When I come in here and set up my restore policy I want to restore that to a directory, pull off a file, move a file, do whatever I want to and then if I you know, want to move it back into its original directory. I could could have put it in here, but I'm going to restore it to a different directory so I can then deal with the data and then um, move it if I want to. I'm going to hit restore. It's going to queue up that process, and again, it's reaching back to that object storage. It's going to be pulling that data, putting it back on this local server. And actually, we can we can watch this whole thing kind of uh, walk through its process. So if you refresh this, you'll see that directory created. And oh, there it is! Before I even was going to hit that refresh, it ends up creating that directory on Bri Restore, and we can kind of watch and see that it's going bri info it puts the date with some additional strings to just let it identify more details of the restore so if i would have clicked over here it would have said still in progress but it's already complete and the job is successful so let me actually go into this new directory my data that i lost remember that folder was called bri test and it's that compressed file and that compressed file is all this data it's basically a bunch of windows themes that i put together in a zip file just to make a large file to be able to move a lot of data and just so, show and just show you the speed of centralink cloud and simple backup service 
So that has completed the job. Again, I've got a simple interface, very simple process to add servers. And that's about it for this time. Uh, again, an overview of CenturyLink Cloud, simple backup service. And if you enjoyed this or saw some benefit, please hit the like below and have a great week. Take care, everyone.